Okay, you guys know what's going on by now. But if you're new to the series, that's alright too, because I know this looks like a giant iceberg in its own right, but this is just a part and one tier of a massive Lost Media iceberg. This is actually part 5 of this ongoing series. So if you want to catch the other parts before this one, we got a playlist all set up. But if you just want to check out this video, that's alright too. If you enjoy it, you can always check out the other parts later. Anyway, I won't bore you all with too much introductions, let's just jump back into the massive Lost Media iceberg. American Crisis Starting it off here, we've got another seemingly rare and obscure game from the 90s, a Famicom game called American Crisis. Created by a Taiwanese company, with the game having you control a soldier in the Gulf War, and can choose to play in the locations of Iran or Iraq. However, the game was ultimately never finished or released. G-Man Virus. This right here is gonna sound like a Gmod ARG, and well, maybe it is. Maybe it's just some creepypasta from back in the day. But it's alleged that there was actually a disturbing virus found in 2009 in Gmod, although it's since been lost to time. However, there are various reports about what it entailed, as well as even recreations, thanks to this being popularized by another Iceberg Explained video by Endy about, well, Gary's mod. It was supposedly a regular workshop add-on that when downloaded would jumpscare the player with G-Man's face, accompanied by a loud screamer. It would also open your browser to a shock site as well. And this is a recreation of the virus created by Liebert on YouTube. Warning though, it is pretty loud. Jamie Kane. So Jamie Kane was an ARG created by the BBC back in the early 2000s, centered around the death of a fictional pop star named Jamie Kane, which was reported on in fake BBC reports that would give clues and lead players to try and uncover the mystery behind her death. It even had its own website and officially launched back in August of 2005. However, the game and website had quite a few issues, and the BBC even ran into controversies over the game, and since then the official website, jamiekane.co.uk, no longer actually works. Apollo 11 Lost Footage Here's something I've talked about before, as this is one of the most important pieces of lost media in history, and has led to quite a bit of speculation over its missing status, with conspiracies and all that good stuff. But essentially, back in 1969, the Apollo 11 moon landing mission was broadcast live on TV, showing the first ever human to walk on the moon, Neil Armstrong. However, the logistics behind the broadcast are a little bit complicated, as it used a different signal for the images compared to what TVs would broadcast in, making it so the broadcast was actually recorded off of a screen of the original recording. It's a little bit complicated to explain, but basically not the original master tape footage, which eventually became lost. As according to NASA, get this, the master tapes may have been wiped for reuse for other programs, as this was a common practice back then. Crazy to think of, but I guess media preservation, even if something of this magnitude, was not taken as seriously back then. Or I don't know, maybe they confused it for something, or for others I guess this is a sign that something really isn't right about this broadcast and has led to a slew of conspiracies related to this moon landing mission. Osama Bin Laden Animal Crossing Save Files now, this is kind of funny, but also for some reason kind of chilling. Basically, when Osama Bin Laden was taken down back in 2011, a hard drive was recovered which had some really interesting data, including anime like Naruto and Dragon Ball Z, and even games like Pokemon, Resident Evil, and Animal Crossing of all things. And that doesn't necessarily mean it belonged to him specifically, but of someone in that compound at least. And this entry specifically refers to save files from the Animal Crossing Wild World for the DS, which was found on the hard drive, which the CIA actually apparently made downloadable. However, no one has actually gotten the save file to work as far as I could tell, and it seems it is actually just a small file of only 100 bytes, so likely not actually real save data. Rick and Morty Jared Fogel adds. 
During the early days of Rick and Morty, there were some subway commercials planned that were going to feature the main characters of Rick Sanchez and Morty, who would claim to be the new Jared, taking over from Jared Fogle, the previous subway spokesman. However, shortly before the commercials could air, of course Jared was arrested and charged for some very heinous crimes, and so the commercials were cancelled and never actually aired. However, the creator of Rick and Morty, Justin Roiland, said he put 8 copies on 8 different thumb drives and hid them in seemingly random places for people to find. However, still none of these commercials have ever been found, or at least posted online. Shrey 27 This is a partially found film that first premiered in 2011 and was based on a 1994 album called Shrey X. The film was played at concerts and live performances, but never saw a release outside of that. Only 4 minutes of footage were uploaded to YouTube, and the director of the film doesn't want any images or videos actually circulating, so I won't show any here, but just know they do exist, and from the clip I saw, it was actually incredibly disturbing. Bible Black Latino Dub so, uh, Bible Black is an anime adaptation of a visual novel of the same name, which, um, how do I say this? Okay, it's, it's, it's hentai, alright. And apparently there was a Latino dub made which is now lost, and some people on the Lost Media Reddit claim to remember it existing, but from what I could tell, there is no actual evidence of its existence as of now. Tagalog Dubs so I think this is just another general one. Tagalog is a language spoken most notably in the Philippines, and so I think this just refers to various Filipino dubs of media which became obscure and lost over time. And a few examples of this that I could find are for Handy Manny, Camp Laszlo, Ben 10, Chowder, and quite a few more actually. The Cure for Insomnia 1987 this is a rather bizarre lost film from 1987 that is reportedly 85 to 87 hours long, which made it at the time of its release the longest film ever created. And it was directed by John Henry Timmis IV, with it being of an actor, L.D. Grobin, reading a 4,000 page poem titled A Cure for Insomnia, which was also spliced together with pornographic images as well as metal music. And apparently it was actually meant to help treat insomnia, but it was only shown from January 31st first to February 3rd and was never seen again, never getting a home media release of any kind. Goman Torture Master so this is a rather creepy mystery concerning a game that was never released likely. A title called Goman Torture Master, or just Goman Master, which was created by Kowloon Kurosawa, the same guy that made Hong Kong 97, and was featured in a Japanese magazine with this very creepy image accompanying it. However, there isn't much else known about this title. Estudio Cristiani Ads this refers to lost ads created by the studio of Quirino Cristiani, an Argentine animator and director known for making El Apostol, an infamous piece of lost media, as it is considered the first ever animated feature film. However, it was lost to a fire in 1926, and sadly, like a lot of his other early works, these ads made by the studio are for the most part also lost and pretty obscure. Madonna's sex book unreleased photos. Another sex book, apparently, but this one was actually just titled Sex. And it can be found on the internet archive, so the book itself isn't lost, but it is a 134 page book released in 1992 by Madonna, with it showing sexual photographs and fantasies of hers. And it is actually still available on Amazon, although for some pretty wild prices, but I guess there are some photos that never actually made it to these official releases. The Apprentice Deleted Outtakes Back during the presidential election of 2016, some audio recordings were leaked of the candidate Donald Trump making certain comments in 2005, and apparently there were also some comments made in a similar vein on his reality show The Apprentice, which he was the host of from 2004 to 2015, with some members of the cast and crew claiming there were outtakes of Trump actually saying slurs and making other inappropriate comments. However, the footage or audio has never surfaced, likely for legal reasons reasons. Wurzuda.pl, that's the best I got, I guess. 
Anyway, more Polish lost media. Basically, this was a website that was created in 2006 and closed in 2017. However, it was most popular in its early years, and was a file sharing website for videos and audio. However, apparently the website, because of this, ran into some issues with copyright, and the website now no longer exists, which means a ton of lost media from the site, which will likely never be recovered. Zeuxis Paintings one of the earliest and most important Greek painters was a man named Zeuxis, who introduced and may have started quite a few different art styles, and made nude paintings as well as other realistic pieces using different techniques for light and shadow, which would kind of revolutionize the painting game for the time back in the 5th century BC. However, none of his works have been found today, and since it was so long ago, it's unlikely that they will ever resurface, but hey, I guess you never really know. Hey Hey Monica Danish Version This is an originally Swedish song created by the group Nick and the Family in the mid-90s, but wasn't actually released until 2004. However, there is apparently a Danish version of the song, which also released in 2004, with actually cover art for the song being found, although the song itself is lost. Lie 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 Original Lyrics so I believe this refers to the Serge Tonkin song from his debut solo album, Elect the Dead. Apparently in its first drafts, however, the lyrics were much different, as Serge himself went on to state, quote, At first I was skeptical because you have to adopt different roles simultaneously. You have to learn to self-edit, and fortunately I was able to be very critical. An example would be a song called The Lie 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 which is a funny song, but I had some very serious lyrics to it. Man, I went in there five times trying to make that song great, but it just wasn't working. Then I realized the lyrics were way too serious for such a silly song, so I ripped them up, threw them on the floor, and went in and did it all on the fly, just having fun and creating it all again from scratch. In the end, the song became this really crazy, humorous drama, and you have to do that. You have to be critical and keep changing things until it sounds right. So yeah, it looks like this version with the original lyrics will remain lost, unless he ever decides to release them, but it seems like they're just gone forever. Sonichu Unreleased Issues Oh boy, so everyone's favorite webcomic, if you could even call it that is Sonichu, unless you've never heard of it somehow, but the gist of it is basically this is the iconic work of Chris Chan, who I'm sure needs really no introduction. The work is a crudely drawn version of Sonic and Pikachu basically mashed together, and the story is, well, basically just Chris's real life, and she even inserts herself into the story as a real character. And to date, there are 13 complete issues, as well as many spin-off and special episodes as she calls them, but there are also quite a few unreleased but worked on issues such as 14, 15, 16, and even 17, which all have at least some artwork and story written for them. And uh, who knows, now that she's out of prison, uh, we, might, we might get some more Sonichu uh, issues. Rendlesham Forest Incident Documents this refers to a series of reported UFO sightings, or at least of strange unexplained lights, in England in 1980, and took place near a United States Air Force Base, curiously. And since then it's been called one of the most known UFO reports in the UK's history, including sightings from multiple people, including established military personnel. However, it appears that there are still some classified documents from this incident, meaning we may not have the full picture, although at this point there have been quite a few theories proposed as to what caused the lights, ranging from a falling meteor to lights from a nearby lighthouse, or even it being possibly a hoax created by the SAS, or the Special Air Service of the British Army. But none of these have actually been proven. The Thomas and Friends Institute of Innovation Made sometime in 2013 or 2014 presumably, this Thomas and Friends short film was made to pitch the series to merchandising companies, where in the film, two scientists experiment with Thomas and the other characters giving him wings and giving the character Percy Botox, apparently, and even steroids to another character. Huh? However, the film was never officially released publicly, although some clips do exist online. Ramstein Sontag Bayomi. Gosh, I'm, I'm sorry. 
Moving past my horrible pronunciation there, Rammstein is actually a German band formed in 1994 known for a German subgenre of rock known as New German Hardness in English. And one of their lost songs is that one referenced in the entry. And it was found in a 2004 database, but since then it has never been released, although it has been mentioned on a few occasions, and apparently it was recorded in 2003 and is almost 4 minutes long. Eric Andre Show Demo Tape The Eric Andre Show probably needs no introduction, but it's a very well known comedy show mocking late night talk shows. But the demo pilot created in 2009, before the show aired in 2012, hasn't been found. Although we do have a few of the segments, but the full episode has yet to be located. We do know it had a low budget feel compared to the official episodes, and it was about 7 minutes long, which Eric Andre edited himself with Final Cut Pro, showing it to studios in hopes that they could get the show off the ground, which obviously succeeded. And so fans hold out hope that one day the full episode will be released officially. Pull My Strings Live Show Back in 1980, at the Bay Area Music Awards in San Francisco, the band Dead Kennedys suddenly played a new song on stage called Pull My Strings, after abruptly stopping another song at the beginning of the performance. And there is actually an audio recording of the song, but no video footage has ever surfaced. Slipknot Mudslide Reaction Video so according to a post on the Slipknot subreddit, there is a video that exists of the band Slipknot reacting to a video called Mudslide, which according to this comment and a description of the audio in a YouTube video, it might be some sort of shock video or something similar to Two Girls One Cup. And yeah, that is what it is, basically if you know, you know. There is a hidden track called Mudslide, which is the audio of the band reacting to the video, which has been uploaded on YouTube. And the video is said to be really disgusting, as one of the band members apparently throws up during this. But no video of it has actually been found. Guitar Hero 7 in 2011, a seventh entry in the Guitar Hero franchise was being developed by Vicarious Visions, which would have featured a new guitar that had six buttons and six guitar strings instead of the strum bar. However, development on the game was reportedly rushed, and the product they made did not meet Activision's standards, and the game was swiftly cancelled, although the franchise was eventually rebooted in 2015. Game Boy Color Body Paint Event so most lost media connoisseurs out there know about the infamous Nintendo livestream Slamfest 99. But do you know about the Game Boy Color body paint event? No? Well, I had no idea about this either, but apparently this was a publicly held event in Miami, Florida, where Nintendo body painted college students in their bikinis and swim attire. And no, I'm not making this up, there's actually a few images of this, and even a pretty dramatic and funny article about this called Nintendo Signals Apocalypse, which says, quote, Just when we thought the world might be turning into a better place, a news piece like this comes along. Nintendo painted bikini-clad college students in the shades of its new Game Boy Color units, and you can take a look at the action. To quote the site, picture this, hundreds of crazy bathing suit wearing, party ready college kids getting their bodies painted with the new Game Boy Colors, Kiwi, Dandelion, Teal, and Berry. This colorful event is a bright way for college students to enjoy their time away from school. Sigh. Well, at least they didn't have them beer bong, kiwi, and teal colored ale. Or did they? Biblical scholars wanting to see the world going to hell in a handbasket can check out the video at this link. But please, pray for your immortal soul before typing in that address. Yeah, wow, a little dramatic, don't you think? Uh, it's a bit of a strange gimmick, I'll give them that, but uh, I guess everyone's going to hell over this. Cool. Terraria Otherworld this was a planned sequel to the hit indie game Terraria that was in development for a while, being announced by Relogic, with this game being a spin-off and a different take on the Terraria formula, adapting a more open-world sandbox and RPG slash strategy-like approach. However, in April of 2018, the development was cancelled, citing the game going beyond their vision and being far behind schedule. So all we really have now are some concept art, trailers, and gameplay screenshots. No builds as of yet. Magic Music Video 
So this refers to a pretty obscure early song from the famous rapper Post Malone, who uploaded videos and songs onto a YouTube channel called FKI First. And one of these videos is of a song called Magic, which has since been re-uploaded, although the music video has yet to resurface. Sword Quest Airworld this was a very interesting project made for the Atari 2600 of a series of games called Sword Quest, with each game having its own contest and prizes when they were released sequentially. And eventually, after the four main releases, one of the four main winners of each game would win the final champion prize of $50,000, which is a lot of money today, but was a ton back then in 1983. And the four main games were Earthworld, Fireworld, Waterworld, and Airworld. However, only the first first three were ever released, as there was a video game crash that took place that same year, and this competition, as well as the release of the last game, Airworld, were cancelled, making this piece of Atari 2600 history lost. Persona 4 Chie Satanaka Flash Game this is a rather strange and obscure Persona 4 Flash game that apparently came out before the release of the main game in North America, according to a Wired article, which also states that the goal was to peek through a hole at the character Chie Satanaka as she bathes in a hot spring. As Nuclear Repito Nuclear Broadcast Translating to, it's nuclear, I repeat nuclear, which was a phrase that was said by a Chilean reporter named Erica Vexler during a program called 24 Horas, or Hours, where she said the line as she thought she was witnessing a nuclear attack as far as I'm aware, which was of course not actually true. And it seems the actual broadcast itself hasn't been fully found with this controversial line. Whatever happened to Moxie? So the Moxie show is something I mentioned I think in like tier 3, it's been a while, but that was a CGI animated series about Moxie and Flea, which are featured in a webcomic from 2000 called Whatever Happened to Moxie, which was released on CartoonNetwork.com, but only one panel of the 15 page comic has been found as of now. Lex the Wonder Dog on r slash lost films, a post describes a film from 1973 called Lex the Wonder Dog, which I'll just read out for you. Quote, Lex the Wonder Dog is an adventure film directed by Lord Sidney Ling when he was 13 years old. Guinness at one point listed him as the world's youngest director, so I assume it has been verified. IMDb has no plot or trivia, only 14 votes and 2 user reviews, all highly complimentary of young Ling. He is also alleged to have directed a 24-hour documentary about the island of Ibiza, and works as some kind of consultant and communications advisor for the rich and famous. I've only ever seen a poster of this film. Does it even exist? How can such a rich and prodigious man be so low profile? Is this a hoax? If so, why are there IMDb and BFI registries, and how did they fool Guinness? No DVDs or online clips or even photos are available. So yeah, quite the interesting mystery, and definitely a very obscure film. Fallout Moon DLC This more so relates to a rumor for the first DLC of Fallout 4, which some theorized would be themed around the moon, possibly even a landing and exploring there, but sadly that was not the case. There was a Fallout 3 DLC where you get abducted by aliens, so it's not that Bethesda is afraid of just doing something completely wacky, but I guess the reason people thought that this was happening was because of some small hints that were found, or things that I guess you could say were misconstrued as hints. Like in the base game, in the Museum of Freedom in Concord, which depicts an alternative history on the moon. Lego Beneath the Fantasy this was a planned spin-off of the LEGO Island series, and was also known as LEGO Sea Challenge, which was one of six games being developed after the success of the original LEGO Island. However, due to budget, time, and technology constraints, the game was cancelled. Benoit Pollard Skymost not much to say here other than this is an album that is lost and very obscure, as it only had a very limited CD release in 2003 with only 50 copies made, with it being an experimental electronic slash rock album with 21 songs, which can be seen on Discogs.com. Aisha Erotica Horny.4U 
Horny Da For You is a pop album created in 2017 and 2018 by Aisha Erotica, and was planned for a December 2018 release, before it ended up being cancelled, as the artist chose to retire from making music in November of that year. And there is a track list available, but most of the songs remain lost. 1939 Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade Test Broadcast Held in New York City on November 23, 1939, this was already the 16th annual Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade being held, but it was the first parade to be broadcast on TV. But with it being so long ago, there is no recording of it that's known to exist, only a few images from that day. SCP The Vampire Boat we're back to talking about SCP-048. Yeah, remember that, and how there were so many bad versions that they would just get deleted over and over? Well, here's another one of those cases, that being the Vampire Boat. Which is a bit of a mysterious case, as the admin who was deleting these stories claims there was never one actually called that, despite others saying that there was. The admin, Dr. Kondraki, wrote specifically, quote, Addendum 3. SCP-048 has been once again removed from the archives, after it became highly apparent that no such vampire boat had ever existed, much less come from under Foundation control. It is currently believed that this error occurred when a low-level researcher attempted to save his awesome story idea to his hard drive and instead overwrote the blank slot reserved for SCP-048. The said researcher has been removed from any and all archival duties for the time being. Ice Rink in Lysiansky Park That's the translation anyway, but this film is of note for being the first film in the history of Polish cinematography, at least according to Wikipedia, which was shot in Warsaw between 1894 and 1896 and showed, well, ice skaters. And most likely the film at this point is destroyed, although some frames do still survive today. The Adventures of Pinocchio The Adventures of Pinocchio is an adaptation from the 1930s on the classic story, and was Italy's first animated feature film and the first adaptation of the actual Pinocchio story. However, the film was never actually finished, and so remains a lost piece of animation history. All that remains now are a few stills from the movie. Archery Another very early BBC program. We've touched on quite a few of these, but you know how it goes. Back in the 30s, there really was no means to preserve a lot of these early live broadcasts, and archery was no different. And like the title suggests, it involved demonstrations of archery, making it one of the earliest broadcasts of it ever in history. However, the broadcast remains lost today. Telegony Another piece of Greek lost media, with this being an epic poem about Telegonus, the son of Odysseus, and was a part of the epic cycle of poems, telling stories and myths of the Trojan War. However, like a lot of other epic poems from this time, it's mostly lost, pretty much due to just how long ago it was actually written. House of Wisdom the House of Wisdom is another library which, I'm sure you guessed it, had a ton of lost literature, which tends to happen quite a bit in history unfortunately, like the lost works from the Library of Alexandria for example. And the House of Wisdom was also known as the Grand Library of Baghdad, and was a place that stored many rare collections of books and poetry in Arabic, before it ended up being destroyed in the Siege of Baghdad in 1258, leaving a lot of those works lost forever. Serbia Strong Interesting enough here, this is actually in reference to a very famous meme song known as Remove Kebab or Serbia Strong, which was a Serbian propaganda song used during the Balkan War, although it's said to only be partially found, as the video with the song is actually an edited version of the original music video, which was created sometime in the mid-90s and is for now actually lost. Igor Stravinsky, Conductor and Tarantula This refers to a lost work of Igor Stravinsky who was a notable Russian composer, one that was made in 1906 called Conductor and Tarantula. Not much at all is known about the piece other than when it was composed, as it seems the work was never officially published. Masa Works Design Interface 
This refers to a lost song from a Japanese Vocaloid producer known as Masa Works Design, which was a rock song featuring the characters of Kagamine Rin and Hatsune Miku. However, besides this thumbnail and a few lyrics, not much else about the song is known. Although based on some of the known lyrics, as well as the kanji seen in the thumbnail, some believe the song could be about murder. Nightcore Songs now, this could be talking about missing Nightcore songs in general, like, you know, those sped up ones, but I think this is actually talking about a music duo from Norway called Nightcore with some lost tracks, which actually probably started or at least popularized that music subgenre. However, a lot of the duo's music itself seems to be hard to come by, as only two albums were ever shared via YouTube from CDs from back in the day, meaning they might have some more obscure tracks out there still. Maya Codices. These are some really old folding books that were written by a pre-Columbian Maya civilization in hieroglyphic script, so yeah, quite a while ago. They depict various cities and even deities from the culture, and were written on what is thought to be paper made from fig trees, and there were a ton of these things. However, a lot of them were destroyed in the 16th century by Catholic priests, who actually believed them to be the work of the devil, and so many were actually burned, destroying a lot of primary historical records for ancient Maya civilization, although some do survive today, but a lot of them are gone for good. Operation Dark Heart Operation Dark Heart, also given the subtitle Spycraft and Special Operations on the Front Lines of Afghanistan and the Path to Victory, is a memoir written by Lt. Col. Anthony Schaefer, who recalls his time in the war in Afghanistan and exposes some disturbing practices on the behalf of the US military. However, before the book was published in September 2010, the US government actually bought out all almost 10,000 first edition copies, claiming that it leaked details about classified operations. Operations. And because of this, about 250 pages from the memoir were removed. And as of now, most of these lost pages are still missing. Yutokayo Maru this is quite a disturbing one here, because this refers to an unfinished novel written by Mutsuo Toei, who was a deranged killer who took the lives of 30 people, including his own grandmother, in a single night in his village using a shotgun, katana, and axe, before finally ending himself. This event was known as the Suyama Massacre, and upon an investigation of the village, police found this incomplete novel, which was inspired by the real-life case of a Japanese prostitute named Sada Abe, who killed her lover in 1936. Although besides that, not much else is known about the novel itself, and it was never published and likely was destroyed. Watchmen Original Script Watchmen is a rather famous DC comic from 1986, known for changing the landscape of modern superhero comics, and it's become one of the most popular comic series of all time despite only being 12 issues, and despite a few pages of the original full script leaking online, there are said to actually be over 1,000 pages that are still lost. Counter-Strike Source 2 Hey, CS Source 2. Now I'm glad this is on here because, yes, Source 2 for CSGO is finally a reality. After waiting many, many years, it's finally actually happening. We already had a beta release, and now we've got a full-on release coming hopefully soon, which I'm pretty excited about. So yeah, not actually lost media anymore, thankfully. Disney Infinity 4.0 this was a sequel in development to Disney Infinity 3.0, which was meant to release in 2017. Although it was cancelled in May of 2016, and despite a few known gameplay features and other new content, not too much about development is actually known. Distrust This is an early version of the video game Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc released in 2010, that was worked on a few years prior before undergoing some changes in development. The premise was still mostly the same, although it would take place in a warehouse instead of a school and was said to take on a much darker tone, not having as many comedic moments. Particularly, there was said to be a lot more violence and gore, which the team toned down for Rampa. There were originally also more decisions and a unique feature which had characters have different levels of trust for the protagonist, as well as even additional endings which never made it to the final game. Also, some characters were pretty different, 
but the most different character for sure was Monokuma, who in Danganronpa is like this cute little bear, but in distrust he's this. Yeah, I'm glad if they changed anything it was this for sure. Jet Force Gemini Game Boy Color Version So the game Jet Force Gemini created by Rare for the N64 was getting a Game Boy Color version that was in development by Bit Studios in 2000. However, despite some screenshots and the soundtrack being made available, not much is known as the title was cancelled not long after, and no builds of the game have found their way online. Microsoft Train Simulator 2 Microsoft Train Simulator 2 had quite a long and arduous development, starting back in 2003 before being cancelled in 2004, and then being picked up again in 2007 before it was postponed and essentially cancelled outright in 2009. It tried to leverage the flight simulator platform and assets, but problems with the various studios were popping up, and of course Microsoft was more invested in the more successful and proven series of games in the flight simulators, and so kind of gave up on making the Train Simulator 2 game. At least for now, that is. Spider-Man 4 So this could either refer to the lost but later found video game based on the cancelled movie, or this could refer to the actual movie itself, but since materials from the movie are still lost, and the game is found as of 2019 and 2021 for both versions, we're gonna look at the movie here. So yes, this was the cancelled sequel to Spider-Man 3 of the Sam Raimi trilogy, planned for a release on May 6th of 2011. The plot would have taken place five years after the third movie, and would have had Vulture as the main villain, and a new love interest in Black Cat, with the movie ending with Peter losing his powers and leaving behind the suit for good. However, due to multiple factors, including Raimi being dissatisfied with the third film, the project was ultimately cancelled, and some material has found its way online including storyboards, but I'm sure there's even more content out there. WWE Smackdown vs Raw 2008 Pre-Chris Benoit Death Version This refers to a WWE video game title from 2008, which was planned to include professional wrestler Chris Benoit as a playable character. Although he was removed from the game following the murder of his son and wife, as well as the taking of his own life. Expressionism Noir Again, this is a lost album shown on Discogs, which was released in Greece on Halloween of 2016, featuring 38 electronic and dark wave tracks from many different artists. However, it appears the album is obscure and remains lost. EMT 1198 this is again the same kind of scenario, a lost and obscure album, this time from the UK, released sometime in 1998, and again of the electronic genre. It once again features various artists in a compilation with 9 different tracks. Disturbed The Game this whole thing is kind of confusing because the band Disturbed has a song called The Game, which is separate from an apparent lost cover, also called The Game, of a song made by Motorhead, made as the theme song for professional wrestler Triple H. Got all that? Anyway, the Disturbed cover only has a short snippet found as of now. Music Land 1955 This was an animated film made by Disney in 1955. It was merely a collection of other animated projects, which can all pretty much be found online. However, the new intros and outros and other transitions and stuff exclusive to the film can only be found in this compilation anthology, and has been lost as it was only ever shown once as a tribute to Walt Disney, and was not ever made available on home media release or by any other means. Spawn the Animation so I think this refers to the Spawn animated series from HBO that ran in the late 90s for only 3 seasons of 18 episodes before it ended up being cancelled, and despite being quite critically acclaimed too. It was one of the first adult animated superhero shows and even won an Emmy Award in 1999. And a fourth season of the show was even planned, but was sadly scrapped and the series entirely cancelled, leaving any abandoned material also lost. The Smiths Unreleased Demos Again, something here on Discogs, the unreleased demos and instrumentals of a group called The Smiths, an indie rock band from the UK, with it listing many different tracks here that have yet to be released. 
Mountain Goats, Hail and Farewell, Gothenburg. A sequel to a 1995 album called Sweden by the group Mountain Goats was created called Hail and Farewell Gothenburg but was never released. However, it was actually leaked online in 2007, so I'm not sure if not all of the songs were leaked, but at least most of the album is now available online. Angry Birds La Fiebre Porcina so this is a really interesting and obscure one. Basically this is a lost Spanish Angry Birds creepypasta which only has one minute available through a YouTube narration. Although it's said to be more like a 10 minute read, but again it's a very obscure topic here. User 666 videos so a lot of people in the YouTube horror scene, or even those familiar with creepypastas from back in the day, probably know about or remember username 666, which was a video recreating the creepypasta by Nana825763. Basically it's supposed to be a cursed YouTube account that can damage your computer or possibly even kill you. Of course none of that is real, but the account itself is and is at the same time pretty mysterious, as when you look up the account URL it says the account is actually terminated. As to why or what videos it had on the original channel, well, we may never get the answers to these questions. But it is a rather interesting mystery and a piece of creepypasta and YouTube history. 1928 Murhorse Photo this is quite an interesting entry, despite it seeming pretty obscure to someone who is fairly unfamiliar with real life cryptids, at least when it comes to the lesser known ones that is, because here in a post on the Cryptozoology subreddit, a few posters talk about lost media in cryptozoology. And an example that's brought up by user crofter number 2 is a photo from 1928 of a merhorse, or sea serpent, taken off the Isle of Man. Tabatu Sasula We're getting into some real obscure stuff now. This is a lost film from 2010 which has next to no info other than a few facts on the IMDb page, which was stated in a director commentary for the film Who Killed Captain Alex, which was directed by the same guy and has gone on to become quite the cult classic in its own right. Mei's Bakunetsu Jiku Tenpen Kyo no Giant this sequel film with a very long name is actually an adaptation to another anime series that's adapting a manga of the same name, and the film was released in Japanese theaters in April of 1998, but never saw any additional theatrical runs or even any home media releases, making this film rather hard to come by. It had a runtime of 42 minutes and followed up as a direct sequel to the events of the TV series, and as of now, only a few brief clips from the movie are really available. The King Kong Appears on Edo This is a two-part Japanese film starring the titular monster and is considered to be the original kaiju monster film, being made well before the genre would be known with Godzilla in the 50s, and like the original King Kong, it's about a woman being kidnapped by the beast, and the first part was released on March 31st, 1938, with the second part coming out only a week later. However, it's thought that all known copies of the film were destroyed in the 1945 bombings, although that is not confirmed, but either way, both parts remain lost. Kingdom of the Sun This is an early version of The Emperor's New Groove, which was originally known as Kingdom of the Sun, and was slated for a December 2000 release, with the story being pretty similar having mostly the same cast of characters and basic story beats, but a lot was also different, including the title of course, and about 20% of the animation was done by the time they shifted gears into making The Emperor's New Groove. And some of the unfinished work from Kingdom of the Sun can be seen in a documentary from 2002 called The Sweatbox, and a few designs show the differences in the characters, but we don't have much else on this. Hong Kong Fui Movie here we have another cancelled film, a live action CGI movie based on Hong Kong Fui, with Eddie Murphy planned to voice the main character of Penry Pooch. However, not too much else besides some test footage was leaked, as the film was promptly cancelled. Animaniacs Hollywood Hypnotics 
Developed as a 2D platformer for the Game Boy Advance, this was going to be a game based on the Animaniacs, which would also incorporate aspects of point-and-click adventure games, with the players collecting various things in each level and using them for puzzles throughout the game. However, this title and another Animaniacs game called Hollywood Hijinks, being published by the same studio, Swing Entertainment, were both cancelled in late 2003, leaving builds of this game long lost. Angry Birds Flash Version This refers to a lost demo shown off at an Adobe event in 2011 that had 21 total levels and was actually a Flash game and was meant to launch sometime in 2011, although it ended up being cancelled and was replaced by Angry Birds Friends, and with it being a Flash title and all, the game is no longer available. Corpse Party New Chapter here we have a cancelled and discontinued mobile game in the Corpse Party Horror series, which was released as Chapters. From October 3rd of 2006 with Chapter 1, to Chapter 4 on December 26th, 2007, before development was ended. There is a PC version of the game that is quite different, but the mobile versions are no longer available for download. Crazy Frog Collectibles Faces Crazy Frog Collectibles Faces is a DS puzzle game starring the frog CGI guy from all those music videos back in the day, but not too much else is known about this obscure DS title. It possibly released in 2008 in Spain, but other than that we don't really know. Possibly it was never even finished at all, as not even gameplay has been found. Dead or Alive Code Kronos this was a working title of a cancelled entry in the Dead or Alive game franchise that was said to be a prequel telling the stories of the characters Ayane and Kasumi, but development on this title didn't get very far at all. In fact, even the head of Team Ninja who was developing the game said it never really got past a framework stage, so probably not even builds of this title. Dinoblox this refers to an early version of Roblox that was once called Dinoblox, in 2003 before it was eventually changed. And there is an archive of the Dinoblox site back when it was called that, but it remains inaccessible. Epic Mickey 3 Moving on here with the theme of cancelled games, we have the third entry in the Epic Mickey series, which was cancelled by Disney in order to focus more on mobile gaming. All there really is is a brief teaser at the end of Epic Mickey 2 showing that a trilogy was planned, as well as some other pieces of concept art which were shown off. Again though, there might not even be an early build of this title. Klonoa 2 GameCube Version here we have a piece of unconfirmed lost media, as it is thought that there could be a build out there of a GameCube port of Klonoa 2 created in 2001 for the PS2. It was first mentioned in a magazine called Next Gen, and was described as an enhanced version of the game. So if a port was in discussion, it was likely cancelled due to the poor sales of the PS2 version, and if any builds do exist, they've yet to be found. The Shock Media Iceberg Last Version this refers to a lost final version of an iceberg dedicated to shocking media, which ranges from prank shock videos to some really disturbing and grotesque content. And there is an early version of it, but the last one is apparently lost. LEGO Star Wars 3 Beta this is the beta for an online MMO developed by LucasArts and released in January of 2011, based on the animated series The Clone Wars, but was unfortunately shut down by Disney after acquiring the IP in 2013. And a link to the game is actually still available from the Wayback Machine, but sadly the game remains unplayable, although there is plenty of footage of it out there. Jimmy Hopkins Death Scene so some people thought that this was some twisted alternate ending to the Rockstar game Bully, but really it's not, it's just a mission failure, although a pretty brutal one at that. Basically in the game Bully, the protagonist, Jimmy Hopkins, in Mission 64 Showdown at the Plant, if he loses the fight, he would be thrown into Acid, which obviously kills him and is notably dark for a game about high school kids. But this was removed and never made it to the final release. We only know of its existence thanks to some sound files. It it possibly was never even animated in the first place, so all we really have are these sound bites. That burns, doesn't it? Nothing like a chemical peel for your skin, huh, Jimmy? 
Poor little Jimmy taking an acid bath. Virtual Boy Mario Kart Here we've got another cancelled Mario Kart title for the notorious Nintendo console, The Virtual Boy, which barely has any games because it was such a travesty of a console, so it's pretty obvious why it was cancelled. However, there is next to no info on this, so it probably didn't get very far in production at all. We don't have any playable builds or anything like that. The Dark Chapters so I think this refers to a book written by a YouTuber called The Irate Gamer, also known as Chris Bors, which he described as a fantasy novel, and included a description reading, quote, For centuries the world has been protected by a group of sages sworn to protect all of mankind from evil. As these elite groups of men inch ever closer to retirement, little do they know that unfinished business from their past dangerously closes in on them. Panic strikes when an ancient prophecy is set off by someone of great evil who is collecting together four elemental stones that they thought had been erased from human history, with each stone carrying one of the four elemental powers of the earth. The evil threat grows stronger in power with each new stone he obtains. Auric, the leader of the Sage Circle, is forced to bring his people in training, Chris, into the turmoil and affairs of the group prematurely. However, there seems to be no copies available of the book as of now. But I do like how he kind of inserted himself into it. I, I love just a fantasy novel having a dude named Chris. Roblox Audio Library This is talking about the custom audio files that could be uploaded to Roblox at one point before they changed their policy on audio and had to remove the feature due to copyright issues, leaving all of those uploaded custom sounds pretty much lost. Ring Suzune Voice Bank this is an unreleased voice bank of a character called Ring Suzune, a part of the group Vocaloid Next, which was scheduled for release in December of 2011. And while there are a few known songs from the official demo for Ring, the character was never fully utilized. Zanyin Laura Voice Bank Similarly, we have another case here with a Vocaloid character, this time in Mandarin for the character Zanyin Laura, mostly made for a rhythm game called Zanyin OL and there are a few samples of the voice that can be found, however, most of what was recorded is now lost. Cabbage This is another cancelled and lost project from the Nintendo 64 disk drive, which I've brought up many times on this channel, and this game was given at least the working title of Cabbage, and was going to be some kind of virtual pet game, similar to Tamagotchi. The game was also meant to have a feature where you could transfer your creatures to the Game Boy to take care of your pet on the go, and they were even going to show off this title at Space World 2000. However, the game never got that far, and most of its elements were either scrapped or repurposed Purposed for Animal Crossing and Nintendo Dogs. Chucky Wanna Play? Okay, so not only is this a recently found piece of lost media, but it is also one of the most fascinating to me personally. Not because I'm a Chucky fan or anything, I haven't actually even seen any of the movies, but because of looking at the gameplay. Like guys, this is basically a Chucky Manhunt clone. This is wild. I honestly do kind of want to play it now. But yeah, it's a cancelled stealth action game where you play as Chucky from Child's Play and have to sneak around in the shadows and execute people. Hmm, sounds a little familiar, right? However, the game never really got off the ground as its Kickstarter failed to raise its goal. But in February of 2023, this prototype of the game was found and uploaded to the Internet Archive by Riley5411, claiming to have found it on an Xbox 360 dev kit. Plants vs. Zombies 2 Alpha Versions of 7.4.1 Update So here we have a short-lived alpha and beta version of Update 7.4.1 Point one. God, this whole, it's a lot to say, I'm sorry. For Plants vs. Zombies 2, which was only available for a very short time before it was taken down, and had some unreleased material that was not seen in the final updates. It showed unfinished expansions and even additional zombies and levels that weren't yet meant to release. And while there is footage and screenshots, it is impossible now to play that actual alpha update. Plants vs. Zombies Talking Zombitar 
This was a cancelled spin-off title of Plants vs. Zombies known as Talking Zombitar, which was meant to be a virtual pet game where the player could take care of their very own zombie, and even play minigames with it and dress them up as well. However, the title was scrapped and only a short teaser was ever shown off. Children of Loneliness so this is a really interesting film, as it's said to be one of the first to notably explore homosexuality, although it's thought to also be an exploitation film, and doesn't exactly portray gay people in a good light. I mean, this was 1937, so I guess you can imagine, but it's also been said that doctors would also go to screenings and hand out pamphlets to try and quote-unquote cure people of their homosexuality. So yeah, the 30s were a wild time, and as of today, the film is lost. Elf Bowling 2 Also called The Great Pumpkin Heist, it was a planned sequel to Elf Bowling the movie, being based on a series of Flash games of the same name. However, the first film didn't perform well and was universally panned by critics for its poor animation. So all that dropped for the second movie was a sales trailer. However, not long after this, it was cancelled. They Might Be Giants, Don't Worry Kyoko this is talking about the first song ever recorded by the band They Might Be Giants, who recorded a cover of Yoko Ono's Don't Worry Kyoko back in the 70s, well before the band was even officially formed in 1982. There is said to be a tape that exists with the cover, however so far it has never seen the light of day. Typo Negative, If She Loved Me this is a song performed by the band Typo Negative at a few of their shows that was never officially dropped as part of a studio album. And in fact, it doesn't even have an official name. If She Loved Me is just what fans call it because of some repeated lyrics in the song. It's rumored though that there is a studio version that exists that just never made it onto an album. But if it does exist, it has not yet been found. J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar Album this is talking about a collaboration album that has been anticipated and talked about since 2018 from rappers J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar. However, the full album has never released, and it may in the future, but I guess we'll just have to wait and see with this one. Tenoki Another historical text here, this time being written in Japan in the year 620 by Shotoku Taishi and Soga no Umako. The book is referenced in another old Japanese text called The Chronicles of Japan. However, it seems Tanoki was lost in a fire in 645. Terry Pratchett Unpublished Writings so for fans of this late novelist, this can be very sad news, but it is something that he personally requested, which was that any of his unpublished or unfinished writings actually be destroyed, along with his computer hard drive, which was to be done in grand fashion using a steamroller, which was actually fulfilled, making this some permanently lost media. Dune Lost Screenplays Dune is a very famous sci-fi novel and later series of books that have had many attempts at adaptations, which seemingly could never really capture the wonder and mystery and scale of those books. Well, except maybe the newest one, which as someone who never actually read those books was a pretty great movie, but that aside, there have been many stabs at a screenplay to adapt the book, including one in 1975 that had a huge script and storyboard collection that sadly was never able to be made, but later received a documentary about the project and director himself, called Joe Dorowski's Dune. There was also another three-hour screenplay written in 1978, and a few more drafts made by Ridley Scott, and pretty much most of these screenplays are now lost. The Undead this is referring to an original early version of the iconic novel by Bram Stoker, Dracula, which at one point was known as The Undead, and was found as an unfinished manuscript that was missing the first 102 pages. It was actually discovered in 1980 inside of a barn of all places in America, and had quite a few differences to the classic Dracula novel, and a few additional pages were found from other sources, but a lot of those first 100 pages are still missing. Celine Siyama Screenplays 
The French film director Céline Sciamma released a script book for her most famous film in 2019, A Portrait of a Lady on Fire. However, she has yet to release the scripts to her three other films, those being Water Lilies, Girlhood, and Tomboy. However, it is possible that they could be released in a similar format down the line. Zhang Yu Meng Ying also known as Reflection of Crescent, is a Chinese anime-like animation about a society in which humans and demons coexist, which was planned to be an OVA and was announced to be released in 2011. However, the project was eventually delayed, and then info really just stopped coming out, and the OVA itself never released, leaving the animation pretty much cancelled. Although images did circulate of a proof-of-concept DVD, so it's unsure how far into production it really got before it was terminated. Tor Kaiser. This is another anime project, this time from the United Arab Emirates, which is interesting, this being one of the first attempts at an anime from that region, and it was announced in 2013 with a trailer shown at Comic Con in Dubai, with the storyline being, quote, A young Arab man named Ahmed took his first day of his vacation in Akihabara, Japan, until he sees these two cyborgs fighting in the air. One of them was shot down by the alien robot, and it's up to Ahmed to save the day. A second trailer also dropped in 2014, but since then it seems that production has come to an end, as we've really got nothing else on this project. King George VI Speeches King George VI was known for having a stammer during his speeches, sometimes failing to get words out properly, possibly due to nervousness, which makes sense. I mean, it's hard enough to just talk into a mic to people on YouTube. Imagine giving speeches to a whole country. But anyway, a lot of his speeches, though, are actually lost, being he was the king from 1936 to 1952. And one of the most famous examples is a 1925 Wembley speech from before he was actually king, when he stuttered and stammered so bad that it took hours to complete the speech. And so this one, along with many others, especially more of his pre-reign ones, are actually lost. John Lennon Deleted Tapes so there is a rather interesting Reddit post on the Beatles subreddit talking about some lost John Lennon tape that was allegedly recorded on the day of his death, specifically by his record producer John Douglas, who said about the tape, quote, There were some strange things said in that control room. I don't want to talk about it. I erased the tape because it was a real painful tape. What could he have really been talking about here? Why did it happen to be recorded on the day he was assassinated? Well, I guess we may never know. Power Rangers Animated Series It seems that in 2009, there was a pilot made for a Power Rangers Animated Series for Disney XD. However, info on this is very hard to come by, and it's unknown if this is even true although it has been claimed on various forms. However, there was also another pitch pilot made by an animation studio called Nerdcore, who pitched the idea to Disney but was rejected. So maybe this is what this could be referring to, or it could be a completely separate project. Pokemon Episodes 683 and 684 Planned for a release in 2011 for the Pokemon anime and its 14th season were episodes 683 and 684, involving Team Rocket and Plasma battling over a meteorite. However, the episodes would go unaired, as it was deemed insensitive to release them at the time due to similarities to the Fukushima nuclear tragedy that had occurred that same year. There are screenshots and previews, but that's about it. Philadelphia Toboggan Company Animatronics Audio Alright, real life Five Nights at Freddy's time, because we've got these incredibly creepy animatronics from the Philadelphia Toboggan Company. However, since they are so old and now out of commission, most of the audio from these are now gone as well. Man at the Crossroads this refers to a lost mural painting from a famous Mexican painter named Diego Rivera, and this was actually one of his greatest and most acknowledged works, and it's still in Mexico City and has been there since 1934. However, this isn't the original, as it was in fact restored after it was destroyed by Nelson Rockefeller, who commissioned it in the first place, all because of the inclusion of Vladimir Lenin in the painting. But like I said, the recreation of this unfinished work still stands today. 
Loskinodos. So this was a relatively obscure program that ran in the early 2000s on kids TV in Peru every day at 6pm on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and at 5pm on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And it's interesting because it was aimed at kids and had a lot of regular children's programs, but also had shows like Neon Genesis Evangelion and South Park, which I probably don't have to tell you definitely aren't for kids. Apparently though, it seems like both shows were censored and possibly even redubbed over. However, we really don't have any footage of these lost broadcasts, as the program ended in 2001. Trigger Label, Trip Out Tapes, and Trinity Label so this entry is referring to three different labels run by Kazunao Nagata, which pretty much have all of their releases lost, including many cassette tapes, but info on this topic is pretty obscure, although some of the catalog is at least known. The Beatles Yellow Submarine CGI Movie this is a cancelled CGI remake of the 1968 Beatles film which was planned for a release in the summer of 2012, and was being made in collaboration between Disney and Apple as well as another studio called Image Movers Digital, which in 2010 was actually shut down by Disney because of a failed project, which was a Christmas Carol released in 2009. And so this project as well was officially cancelled, although quite a bit of animation, storyboards, and other material have been found over over the years. Frontal Attack Soundtrack This is a lost song from a 2000 Japanese game that was a part of the Seiho project, something similar to the Bullet Hell Toho games. However, in a prototype build of the game, there is a soundtrack that is yet to be found called Frontal Attack and is only available in existing gameplay footage. Ariel Pink's Vault Ariel Pink is a music artist from LA who's released many studio albums over the years. However, like we've come to see throughout the iceberg, most musicians have quite a bit of unreleased songs that never actually make it to the general public. And Ariel Pink is no different, and there's a great list that can be found on the Lost Media Wiki if you're interested in any specific tracks, some of which have been found and some of which are still missing. Carl Wilhelm Scheele Failed Photographs So photography wasn't officially invented until the first picture was taken in 1826, but a contributor to photochemistry was a Swedish-German chemist named Carl Wilhelm Scheele, who may have actually discovered the components necessary for photography years earlier in 1777, and had it not been for his early death, he may have actually been the first one to create photos. So I guess the lost media here comes in with some failed photograph experiments, but from what I could tell, I don't think he was actually able to make any real photographs in that time. Before Crisis, Final Fantasy 7. Here we have another discontinued mobile game, one in the Final Fantasy series created by Square Enix and first released in 2004, before it ended up being closed much later down the line on March 31st of 2018, with the game itself being a prequel to Final Fantasy 7. However, a fan-made remake was actually created in RPG Maker and was released in 2019. Hoy fue un día soleado also known as Today is a Sunny Day, which is a quote that is attributed to journalist Jacobo Zabludovsky, saying this after the 1968 massacre of the Mexican student movement. There are plenty of testimonies of the guy saying this, but as of now, no footage of it can be found, which means this could all just be a Mandela effect or an actual piece of lost media. FIFA Soccer 2002 GBA Port here we have another unconfirmed piece of lost media in the alleged lost and cancelled port for the Game Boy Advance of FIFA 2002. To me personally, this sounds a little hard to believe considering the game dropped in late 2001 for the PS2, PS1, and GameCube, and would have been the first GBA port or handheld port in general for a FIFA title, but that doesn't mean it wasn't being made. In fact, there is an alleged piece of cover art and even an Amazon listing that was created for the game back in 2002, so maybe it really did exist at some point, but we have no real concrete proof as of now either way. The Wiggles NASA 
The Wiggles is a children's performance group that a lot of kids in the 2000s grew up watching. I wasn't one of them, but from the support they've gotten over the years, it's clear that people really like these guys. And the group would even go on to tour various places and perform, and one of these places was actually at the Johnson Space Center in Texas, where they performed various songs for NASA, and it was even broadcast on August 5th, 2004. However, today, no footage from this has ever resurfaced, adding to the list of Wiggles Lost Media. XXX Tentacion Uncropped Photo now, at first glance, this may seem like a very strange and even suggestive photo of XXXTentacion, but according to a post on the Lost Media subreddit, this here is actually a cropped version of a pic of him just holding money. Kind of a strange piece of Lost Media, but here we are, I guess. It seems no one can actually find the uncropped image, and some even think that it may not even exist. Vladimir Putin Home Video so here we have a lost video of Putin and Mr. Beast. <laughs> I'm sorry, it doesn't even look like him. Okay, I'm, I'm kidding. This is, though, referring to some lost and partially found footage of the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin, from some 90s home video, from a vacation that he took with his family in Finland. Pretty much any footage, though, that is posted online, especially on YouTube, is immediately taken down. Kingdom of Heaven more Russian lost media here. This refers to a television broadcast on a channel called RTR that aired from 1991 to 1994, where it would show the recently deceased and give obituaries for them. And those who saw it, especially as kids, described the program as very creepy. Not gonna lie, this actually looks like analog horror. But yeah, a few of these obituaries have been found, but for the most part, these series of broadcasts are obscure and lost. Oh, here we go, okay. D. Schul der Kleinen Vampire Kl No, okay, bruh. Anyway, a long German title, but this here is a point-and-click adventure game released in 2007 in Germany for PC, but info on this is quite obscure and I could only find a few listings. So maybe the game was only available for a short time, or maybe it was never even actually released, or it could just be a very, very obscure title. The Godfather, the game, Marlon Brando's voice lines. Okay, so this Godfather PS2 game deserves a video in its own right. In fact, there are a bunch of interesting GTA clones from this era, including a Sopranos one. But this here is talking about, in this game, there were some voice lines from Marlon Brando, who of course portrays Don Corleone in the film, in probably his most iconic performance of his career. But in the game, he was going to again voice the character, which would be one of his last performances before his death and sadly, due to him being on oxygen while recording the audio, a lot of it wasn't able to be used in the game and is now lost. Although they did keep in one scene of him in the hospital, which is very sad to watch and listen to. Just lie here, Pop. I'll take care of you now. I'm with you now. I'm with you. Now there's a lot of foolishness. I lost this fellow so business. It's so unfortunate. That's really unnecessary. I gave him my know with all my courtesies. I told him his business uh, was not interfered with mine. And uh, he didn't take it right. I know that the Italian family is like a misfortune on our heads. Well, that's life. Everybody's got their own tale of sorrow. Gummy with a Twist Gummy with a Twist is a screamer video found on YouTube sometime in the late 2000s and starts with the Gummy Bear song before it cuts to a jump scare, and then has text that reads, Now go change your shorts and get back to work. However, the video since then has been deleted. 
Jor photograph. Here we've got another interesting piece of cryptid lost media, which is of a supposed creature called a Jor, a huge aquatic reptile alligator lizard looking thing, which was said to be photographed in 1987 in Andhra Pradesh, India. However, that photograph has never surfaced, so it probably doesn't actually exist. T. Wayne, he raps, he sings. He Raps He Sings is a track featured in a collab mixtape between Lil Wayne and T-Pain and was recorded way back in 2009, but it was only ever dropped in May of 2017 for streaming, making the album and this specific track now found. I'm very glad because I finally came back home original lyrics. A very long way to say the Trollolol song, which according to another post on the Lost Media subreddit, has a very interesting backstory behind it, as the song actually had lyrics about an American cowboy, which was what the song was meant to be about when it was written. However, due to it being made during the Cold War, performing a song about an American character was kind of taboo, and so we got the iconic meme song version we know today, leaving the lyrics of the original version now lost. I feel good. Oh boy, so this is a big one. Surprised to see it way down here. As most of you I'm sure know, this is a very infamous piece of Shrek Lost Media and quite the rabbit hole. Basically, to sum it up fast, in an early version of Shrek when they still had Chris Farley voicing the character, a test animation was made by DreamWorks called I Feel Good, singing that same song by James Brown, and coming across a mugger and sending him into the sky. And some snippets from this animation have actually been found on YouTube and are available to watch. However, the full thing has not yet been located, but it's definitely an ongoing saga. Shusha Talk To Me Talk To Me is an unreleased English album from a Brazilian singer called Shusha. Most of the tracks were from live shows and other recordings, and the album was pretty much just a compilation. So a lot of them are actually available, just not in the form of this album which went unreleased. Uh, yeah, this. Not too much to say here, I can't even read that, but this is an album of four songs from an Iranian rock band, released at an unknown date, according to Discogs. Snake. A very, very, very obscure one that I couldn't really find any solid info on, but according to my guy Equal Rep, who actually made the iceberg we're looking into, it's a lost Polish snake game. Snake? Snake game. Most likely similar to those old ones from back in the day. Stickdeath.com Created in 1996, this was a website dedicated to stick figure animations, which I can remember from the late 2000s, early 2010s as being a big thing on the internet for quite some time. Apparently the site also even had games, but the site was taken down sometime in that late 2000s era from 2007 to 2009, and a lot of those animations and games became lost media. Mario Takes America Sonic Reskin Version A piece of lost media within another piece of lost media. We're going deep now. This is talking about the cancelled CDI game that we already discussed, but also I guess there was going to be a Sonic version made just in case the devs couldn't use Mario for whatever reason. So they just had a few backup characters that they planned to just swap out if need be, but neither version of the game has surfaced, so rip. Grezzo 1 Released in 2012, there is a rather interesting game called Grezzo 2, which is a total conversion mod of the original Doom, which began production with the first Grezzo in the early 2000s. A game which has not yet been found, but we can guess its content based on the second one, which is a game in which a farmer named Puro fights to kill Jesus Christ in a battle against Christianity. And the game is known for being extremely vulgar and violent, and the first game apparently he only showed to his classmates before it was banned and decided not to release it due to too many inside jokes. At least that's what the developer claims. Donkey Kong Parking Attendant Arcade Game A man named Steven Radosh, who worked as a publisher for games back in the day, describes in an interview a bizarre Donkey Kong title created by Sega of all companies, where you play as Donkey Kong as a parking attendant and have to dodge cars pulling out of the lot. 
however this strange title was never released and no builds have ever surfaced. Anne Boleyn Original Portrait This famous portrait of Anne Boleyn is actually only based on an original one that does not survive and is permanently lost, although it was likely created in 1533 to 1536. Francis Bacon Destroyed Pope Portraits One of these works can be seen in his interpretation of Pope Innocent X, which was first painted by Diego Velazquez. And in fact, the artist Francis Bacon created a number of these Pope paintings, usually following a previous portrait from way back when. However, he found himself pretty unhappy with most of them and destroyed a lot of those works. And if they were anything like this piece of Pope Innocent X, then they were likely also pretty disturbing. TV Teddy VoiceOver VHS TV Teddy was a strange teddy bear toy product that had a VHS tape that was also released that when played would somehow through a wireless transmitter or something like that activate animatronic parts in the toy making it move its eyes and even talk. And some of these VHS tapes have been found, archived, and even uploaded to YouTube. But they don't all contain the TV Teddy voice lines, which would play in conjunction with the tapes. And so most of those voice recordings, for now, are lost. First TV Transmission the first public TV broadcast ever is likely one that took place on January 26th of 1926, where a Scottish inventor named John Logie Baird showed images of human faces. But you know where this is going. Broadcasts from years after this are long gone, so you know the very first ones are definitely lost. Equals 3 Lost Episodes this is a really early YouTube web series created in 2009 by Ray William Johnson. A lot of people using the site nowadays probably don't even know about or remember this, but it was a pretty big deal back in the day. And out of a huge list of episodes that aired from 2009 to 2016, only about three of them are lost, so maybe one day they will find a re-upload. Adidas Championship Football for Atari ST this is just in reference to an Atari ST port of an Adidas soccer game made for the Commodore 64 and the ZX Spectrum, which never actually got a release and was probably never even finished. Laser Clay Shooting System Back before Nintendo was the gaming giant we all know today, it was actually a toy company, and one of the big ideas was to take abandoned bowling alleys and turn them into laser clay shooting arenas, where players would use light guns to shoot at clay pigeons that were projected onto the walls. So if you want to get technical here, you could consider Nintendo's first actual video game this, in the loose interpretation of the word. And they would even go on to make an arcade style version in 1974, but this original one is long lost as there are seemingly no operational laser clay shooting systems from Nintendo today. Mortal Kombat Fire and Ice This is a cancelled title in the Mortal Kombat franchise, a sequel to Shaolin Monks, and was developed starting in late 2005, but ended not long after in 2006. Although in that short time a prototype was actually created that has never seen the light of day. Although a developer on the game did say, quote, it was cancelled within a few weeks of my arriving in Midway. I don't have anything else to show you, unfortunately. Half the studio was laid off and new management was brought in. Then we started work on TNA Wrestling. A prototype level was built, but that was it. A few design docs were worked on and a few characters were made in 3D, Scorpion and Sub-Zero. The game was codenamed Fire and Ice, as those two characters were to be the main characters. I was really looking forward to doing level design and construction for it. It was a shame it was cancelled. SMB3Free.CF slash EXE these were Flash games which were screamers, with SMB3Free.CF being one created at a Create Your Own Screamer contest which was held in 2016. And the game itself is similar to Super Mario 3 and seems like a free port of it until you get jump scared. Classic. However the game was eventually taken down from AnimatorXP.com and hasn't been seen since. A Bullet for Billy the Kid 
This is a strange recut of a Mexican film called La Flecha Envenenada, which was brought over to America in the 60s and changed to A Bullet for Billy the Kid, which used footage from the original movie but also added English and completely new scenes to try and assemble some kind of a plot and story. And it was released on November 1st, 1963, but since then there hasn't been any sign of the film. Narcos 2009 so this has nothing to do with the Netflix Narcos. This was actually a Dominican film from 2008 to 2009. This was being worked on by first time director Nicky Breton before his untimely death in 2009, which promptly ended production on the film. But not much else about this movie is known. Roy Del Espacio. Also known as Roy from Space in English, this is a Mexican animated film made from 1979 to 1982, with it releasing in select Mexican theaters in March of 1983 for a brief run. However, the movie was said to be of low animation quality and was pulled from a lot of these theaters. A review of the movie even states, quote, Roy Del Despacio looks like a school project made of crude drawings in which neither the characters nor the background are clearly drawn. There is no depth of field and the movement of the figures in the space that surrounds them is not credible. Due to this, Roy and the rest of the characters move like cardboard puppets clumsily and slowly, and they also give the impression to be floating all the time. In the technical aspect, the film is thus a non-entity. Ouch. Anyway, the film today remains lost. Hade Gitria, also called Virgin Hade Gitria, if that's how you even pronounce that. Basically, it's a depiction of the Virgin Mary holding a child Jesus, which has many versions and recreations today. However, the original is most likely lost. While some claim it is somewhere in Russia or Italy passed down through some family. Policia's Ciudad de Mexico. This was a Mexican reality TV series focusing on police that was inspired by the American show Cops, with the series airing from 2000 to 2003, and even played the song Bad Boys just like in Cops. However, for a while the show was very graphic and actually showed violence and death without any censorship whatsoever, but today no episodes of the show have even surfaced. The Quarter Mass Experiment the Quarter Mass Experiment aired on BBC in 1953 as a series of six sci-fi episodes which later influenced Doctor Who, as it also starred a doctor, this time one who was attacked along with his crew by a parasitic alien entity. And the first two episodes are available, but the last four are lost. 1971 Myers Brothers 250 this was a race in the 1971 NASCAR Winston Cup series that took place on August 6th of that year, and was one of the most controversial races in the history of NASCAR, as it was the one and only time that a winner was not chosen, this being because the first person to cross the finish line, Bobby Allison, had a car that was not up to the regulations, even though it did pass inspection. And so they didn't even give it to the runner-up either, they just said nobody won but the broadcast of this event has yet to surface online. 1974 Schaefer 500 Here is another race, this time from the 1974 USAC Championship car season, which happened on June 30th, and was televised, at least in terms of highlights, on ABC in July. But other than that, there is no other footage to be found from this race. Glittering Craft 207 Song And for our last entry here, we have a very sad yet interesting case about a Reddit user called Glittering Craft 207 who posted in r slash music, quote, I'm dying. As my last mission, I will be hunting down and saving as much music from obscurity as possible. But there is one song I want more than the rest. In the post, they basically reveal they have about six months to live due to an inoperable tumor and want to find a song that they once heard on a specific radio station in 2018. However, the poster hasn't been around in a while, leading many people following this mystery to think the worst, and it seems the song was never actually positively identified sadly, at least as far as I could tell. Although it is thought to be some sort of melodic rock song, and hopefully one day, it will be found. 
And that's the end of the fifth part of the massive Lost Media Iceberg. We've only got about three more parts left before we finally finish this thing. And if you've made it this far, not only in this video, but also this series, sincerely thank you for sticking it through. And if you haven't subscribed yet, consider doing so. We're approaching 100k subs, and I absolutely cannot wait to hit that milestone. But anyway, in other news, like I've promised before, the Breaking Bad video is still coming. Hopefully very soon, I know it's taking forever, but I'm hoping to have it done here uh, coming up. I think I'm gonna do one more video first, and then that'll be the next one for sure. But that's about it for me. It's been me, Source Brew. Thank you all again for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care, and peace out.